Energy Boost This breath sequence focuses on practices that increase energy by stimulating the sympathetic nervous system and affecting the rajas gunas as well as methods that facilitate cellular respiration and the production of ATP. The sequence uses a combination of fast breathing exercises and moderate breath holds as well as exercises that balance energy and increase our effect to connect socially. There are many reasons we would want to do a practice to increase our energy, but probably the number one reason is that we feel a lack of energy or motivation and therefore need something to get moving. We naturally gravitate to laziness and lethargy even though we know that chronic inactivity is one of the worst things for us. So why are we natural lazy if it is so harmful? Modern life is about comfort. We live in a world where we can work, sleep, eat, shop, and enjoy countless hours of entertainment without ever leaving the couch. Things like food, water, warmth, safety, and shelter are standard commodities for the majority of people, but this was not always the case. People used to have to work for all these things. To procure water or make fire took energy. To hunt and gather food took energy. Every aspect of living required people to expel energy. If they used energy when it wasn't necessary to survive, they might not have enough to catch their next meal. Resting and being inactive when moving wasn't required was essential for life. But now that activity is rarely needed, inactivity has become the default. To move the body, sometimes we first need to energize the mind and awaken the spirit. When I was in the military, the word motivation was used often. We would go on motivational runs, yell motivational sayings, and sing motivational cadences to inspire ourselves to be eager to charge through the most difficult life-threatening situations or do uninspiring menial tasks without complaint. In that context, motivation meant brainwashing someone into wanting to do something they probably wouldn't otherwise do. Like being willing to give your life for your country to support a cause you may not agree with. I have a different relationship to that world now. Today, I see my motivation as the drive, the spark, the inspiration to carry out and fulfill my purpose and goals in life. But sometimes I recognize the need to want to do things I don't want to do. If my attitude is not in the place I need it to be, I have the breath to motivate me, to boost my energy, and pull me out of wherever I feel stuck. This practice awakens our inner fire to be the catalyst that sparks our motivation by stimulating the mobilization mechanisms of the autonomic nervous system so that we feel like we have the physical energy to get up and go. It does so by creating more sympathetic tone through intermittent rapid breathing exercises linked with breath retention to restore low CO2 levels and increase cellular respiration, which produces more ATP. Throughout this sequence, we also work to improve our rajas by focusing on practices that are inhalation-oriented. Anytime the intent is to increase energy, we need to make sure we maintain balance and establish practices that act as anchors or energy buffers. We want to stimulate the mind and body so we feel energized to work, play, and interact without creating feelings of restlessness or agitation. As we push the sympathetic nervous system, we must also maintain ventral vagal tone, the part of the nervous system that facilitates our ability to interact socially. Again, we accomplish this by doing a breath sequence that works through balanced, slow respirations, fast breathing exercises, and moderate breath retention. Warm-up. The warm-up utilizes a strong ujjayi breath to build internal heat and stimulate your inner anji. Rajas energy, which is the guna associated with passion, drive, and obtaining goals, is stimulated by increasing the inhalation to twice the length of the exhale. To prevent overstimulation of the sympathetic nervous system while still in the warm-up, inner retention is added to match the exhalation. The inner retention slows the breath and accentuates the length of the inhalation, both to give you more of the energetic feeling that you experience from an inhalation-focused breath practice and to maintain balanced CO2 levels. The respirations for this practice consist of a 10-second inhalation, a 5-second inner retention, and a 5-second exhalation. You can increase the intensity of the warm-up by lengthening each component, keeping the ratio of 2 to 1 to 1, and still get the same effect from the practice. With the 10 second inhalation, or longer if you choose, work to fully expand the lungs to strengthen the diaphragm and stretch the intercostals. The exhalations are forceful with a strong contraction of the core. Keep the exhalation slow by increasing constriction of the throat. This also makes the sound of the breath more pronounced. Continue the cycle for 10 respirations. Heat building. The heat building component consists of two similar exercises that progress in intensity. The first starts slow with Bastrika breath at a rate of one full respiration per second for 30 seconds. Bastrika uses the power of the core to bump the breath in and out, further stimulating inner fire and strengthening the stomach. During the 30 second Bastrika breath, you are blowing off CO2 and elevating blood pH to stimulate the sympathetic nervous system. 
Rapid breathing is immediately followed by a 30-second inner retention. During this, you might feel some of the invigorating effects of hyperventilation, such as lightheadedness and tingling in the fingers, face, and belly. This is common and a good sign that you are blowing off lots of CO2. This 30-second retention is not long enough for you to return to baseline, so you start the second round slightly hippocapnic. Repeat the first breath with the pastrika and the retention. When you get to the third breath, you are even more CO2 deficient, which should make the final one-minute hold relatively easy. After the third round of the first heat-building component, double your speed of the pastrika breath to approximately 2 per second. You want to keep the same depth and drive, utilizing the power of the core and diaphragm to move as much air per breath as possible. After 15 seconds or about 30 bastrika breaths, hold the outer retention for 15 seconds. Continue this cycle of 15 second rapid abdominal breathing and 15 second outer retention for five rounds. As with the first bastrika breath, with each cycle, you become slightly more hippocapnic. After five rounds, continue three more with a 30 second outer retention. Hopefully at this stage you've expelled enough CO2 that the first 30 second retention is relatively easy. The second and third rounds might be slightly harder. You want to experience mild breath hunger by the last retention. If you are not feeling it, you can hold the final retention for a minute to build your CO2 levels back up. For most people, 30 seconds should be sufficient to prepare for the vitalizing component. The breath retention helps balance excessive stimulation of the sympathetic nervous system and limits the other adverse physiological effects from overbreathing. The outer retention works to decrease blood saturation and stimulate red blood cell production. Outer retention accomplishes this more quickly than inner retention because there is less oxygen in the lungs and therefore it is easier to decrease oxygen levels. Increasing the percentage of red blood cells increases VO2 max and your overall energy levels even after the sympathetic tone comes down. Vitalizing. The vitalizing component's primary purpose is to maintain and support the cultivated rajas energy from the previous exercises while stabilizing the autonomic nervous system and increasing cellular respiration for the production of more ATP for the body to use. The Veloma 1 Pranayama practice creates many of the desired effects that you need to accomplish the goal of this component. Veloma 1 inhalation and retention are each twice the exhalation, which promotes rajas energy. The interrupted inhalation stimulates the mind and breaks normal breathing patterns, increasing cognitive awareness. This practice follows the breath ratio of 3 to 2, 2 to 3, 1 to 4 to 5, 3 second belly inhalation, 2 second inner retention, 2 second mid chest inhalation, 3 second inner retention, 1 second upper chest inhalation, 4 second inner retention, and 5 second exhalation. A strong ujjayi technique is incorporated into the interrupted inhalation and exhalation. Just like in the warm-up, using this powerful breath continues to stroke your inner fire, increasing internal heat and energy, and raising your rajas guna. The ujjayi breath also helps regulate the duration of each part of the inhalation, adding an extra level of comfort and mindfulness. The Veloma 1 retention practice may also affect a splenic contraction, increasing the amount of circulating red blood cells, which will deliver more oxygen for cellular respiration and energy production. Cool down. The cool down uses the cooling sitali breath to balance any heat generated from the other practices. Sitali is a technique that involves inhaling through the mouth with the tongue curled like a tube or a straw. The air passes over the tongue and cool air enters the lungs. While this practice uses the breath to cool the body, it is modified by lengthening the inhalation to 10 seconds to maintain rajas energy. The inhalation is followed by a 15 second breath retention to slow the breath rate and allow you to continue the retention benefits as you come to the close of practice. The exhalation uses a breath technique called simhasana, or lion's breath, which is briefly mentioned on 149. Lion's breath is an open mouth exhalation where you extend the tongue towards your chin and look up towards the third eye while making an aspirated ah sound. It is a fantastic exercise that invigorates the muscles of the face and tongue. While it might feel silly to suck air through your tongue like a straw and then stick out your tongue and say ah while rolling your eyes back in your head, this technique has several physiological benefits. The intention is to increase energy, but you want to do so in a way that doesn't spark a fight or flight response. You want to have the energy to move, work, interact, and play. Finding this balance requires the healthy activation of the dorsal vagal complex. One thing we haven't discussed about the polyvagal theory is how the cranial nerves influence the ventral and dorsal vagal complexes and our ability to engage socially and feel safe. Of the 12 pairs of cranial nerves, the majority link to the movement of our facial muscles, tongue, and eyes. Exercising movements between the Satali Pranayama and lion's breath stimulates many of the cranial nerves that influence the ventral and dorsal vagal complexes, increasing our energy while regulating the sympathetic nervous system. Note, 
Polyvagal theory is a complex subject, so my intent is to give you a digestible and usable understanding of its relation to breathing. If you're interested in learning more about this theory, I suggest that you check out the work of Dr. Stephen Porges and Stanley Rosenberg.